Well, we want to take some time to answer the email questions you've submitted, and this first one is from Javier. Pat, he says, I've heard a lot of talk about the occult and the Illuminati, but I'm not too sure I understand what they are. Can you please help me understand this, and what is the difference between the two? Well, Javier, that's a, a, a big question. I appreciate you asking it, but uh, all right, the occult has to do with all those who are seeking uh, extra spiritual enlightenment through uh, fortune tellers, through uh, um, tarot cards, through seances, the whole thing having to do with spiritism. It, all that's called occult. Now, the Illuminati specifically refers to a group of people operating about the uh, time of the French Revolution who thought that uh, they had come across some uh, Egyptian uh, occult material. And the whole idea of Illuminati, they were the illumined ones. Their minds were illumined. And they had a system which very much mirrors what is, is modern-day communism and some of the other things that we have seen uh, in our modern world. <clears throat> but they advanced a, a, a program which had to do with eliminating private property, eliminating marriage, eliminating governments. I mean, it was a radical type of thing. And was the intellectual f forerunner of the French Revolution. So, uh, and they got into the Masons, and there was something called illuminated uh, Masonic uh, activity. So uh, it's spread all around, and, and it had quite an influence. I don't know that it does today, but people keep talking about the Illuminati. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but that's what they there, are. There are people who strongly feel today that that's it's still an active group, but yeah. I don't know. There, there are others who say I don't, uh, I don't it's don't a history. So, but I'm, I'm sure that influence, as I say, it went through with communism, and it's still there. Mm -hmm. This is Margarita who says, I heard rumors that the third temple of Jerusalem is already being built. Is this true? I've heard similar rumors, but I've been over there and I haven't seen any evidence whatsoever. And I've walked the Temple Mount and I've looked all around and it just ain't there. There is preparation, though, isn't there? With well, some I've of heard the... people were building up stone. They're having stone um, quarried in Georgia. And some of the like... things for, for serving the, yeah, in well, the temple I... and things but like that. But you know, that. Terry, uh, I, I read a tract talking about the fact that vultures were coming back to uh, the valley of Megiddo and they were ready for the final battle where they were going to eat the flesh of warriors. Did you see any vultures? So I drove, <laughs> I drove all the way through the valley of Megiddo and I didn't see anything. And finally we were coming up um, onto the Golan Heights and I saw this bird. I said, is that a vulture? And they said, no, it's a stork. <laughs> And that was the only, I mean, this track was yeah. pure baloney. Mm -hmm. But that kind of fantasy is, is imposed on people today. We have to be careful about what we read yes. and what we believe. All right, what else? Renee says, Pat, last week you answered a viewer's question about rewards that we'll receive in heaven. Part of what you said was that we will answer for what we did not do here on earth and be punished. I thought if I truly repented and told God how sorry I am that I would be saved and forgiven. Now I'm more confused and scared. Am I saved? Oh. Am I forgiven? I'm not here to scare anybody, and I, if I, I might, may have been misunderstood. The Lord said, it's very clear, he that hears my word and believes on him who sent me has everlasting life and is, shall not come into the judgment, but is passed from death to life. So the so-called great white throne judgment, the judgment about whether you're going to hell or not going to hell, that's settled when you find Jesus as Savior. But... According to the Apostle Paul, we will stand before the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, to receive rewards for what we've done in our body. And, of course, we've got to give account. I mean, if, if, if you've been screwing around for 30 years, you've known the Lord, you're saved, but uh, your life uh, mm -hmm. has not reflected it, uh, he, he might, or well, Jesus himself said, that he that knew the Lord's will and, and, and did it will be uh, you know, rewarded, and he who didn't do it will have many stripes. So there may be some kind of punishment in, 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 in relation to what you've done, but it, it's a little vague, and so don't be scared. The big thing is if you've accepted the Lord, you're going to be in heaven, and heaven's glorious, okay? This is Jerry who says, what's your belief re regarding the possibility of life on other planets? I get asked this a lot by people too, Pat. Is there any biblical reference to this subject? And if yes, are they our friends? None. <laughs> what? So no, they're not. Our... We've come in peace. No. 
There are a bunch of rocks running around in the heavens. There are a bunch of gas bombs in heaven. There are a bunch of nuclear explosions in the heavens. Uh, I, I really believe that the astrophysicists have it right. The whole concept that it all started with a s incredibly dense uh, uh, thing that well, it wasn't even matter. Matter was formed and then it exploded and, and, and it's, it's ever expanding. The universe continues to expand from what we can gather. Uh, the astrophysicist that I talked to is Israeli PhD and all that stuff. He said the universe was tuned for life. It was tuned for life here. The 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 uh, uh, possibility of life on this planet is extraordinary. I mean, absolutely extraordinary. You have to have a sun. You have to have a moon. You have to have water. You have to have a certain amount of soil. You have to have all these things exactly right. It has to turn in a particular way. It's all set and tuned for life. I don't think there's life anyplace else. And what we've found in Mars and these other places is just barren rocks, some hot, some cold, some hospitable, some not so hospitable. But there's nothing there. Look at the moon. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think there's any other planet with life on it. it. You know, I know there are people who say, oh, yeah, well, God's got other lives and other worlds. But there's nothing in the Bible that backs that up. So. Appreciate it, but don't worry about it. Enjoy this world you have now. This is the only one you're going to get. You're in it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. I love those questions. Yeah. Thank you. I, people have a lot of questions. Thank you for well, submitting I'm, I'm them. Glad, we really I, do like you know, to hear. I'm, I hope I'm giving you an intelligent answer so it'll help you.